Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Stationeers. Now we've just had a recent update to the IC code and we have some new commands. So I thought we'd do drop in and have a quick look at uh, how these ones work because they are pretty damn powerful indeed. Um, so the code commands we've got, of course, are the uh, load batch named and the save batch named. Um, there will shortly be a save slot batch named or save load slot batch load batch slot well whatever it'll be we'll get one of them come along pretty soon and that will open up a whole heap of more things we can get done until then we'll deal with what we've got now um we have got our uh we previously we had uh load commands which can load from a single item or save to a single item and we got our load and save batch commands which can load and save to all items of the one kind at a time uh so we'll just do a quick little thing there so i've got the six led lights there and we will require the batch command for our lights before we get too carried away uh, so you are a LED and you that is the light not the kit uh, but we shall uh, define uh, LED to you right start yield and jump to the start whoops Start for our main program loop. Uh, now, all we want to do is just uh, switch them on and off with a load batch command. Well, or save. Right, so we do that by saying save batch. That now gives us our advice that we need here: device hash. Now we want to write to the batch the LEDs, so we're going to use that hash. But we've defined it as a a, a um constant there so we'll use that just to make our code a little bit easier our logic type we just want to switch it on and we shall our number or register we shall switch it on as one and i shall just uh yield if i can spell it right i uh, yield again and uh do the same copy v and switch it off um, export you that just switches them all on and off and that's pretty much all we can do that will switch them all on and off um, and there's not much you can do about that uh, so if you wanted to have different lights there you could put on different different types of lights and then it wouldn't it wouldn't affect them uh, so if I uh, grab you and put in one of them uh, that one is not switching on and off because it is a different type of light. Um, but if I put new one back in, I can just pull them out and put them back in and it doesn't know about it. I can put, even pull them all out and it doesn't throw an error. The chip's still quite happily there trying to turn them on and off because it doesn't actually check to see if they're there. Um, Right, but we cannot actually do any of them. So the new command we've got is a save batch name. Um, so, uh, shush, uh, that runs on very, almost the same, the same format there, except it is save batch named. Right, so if we get rid of that stuff there, yep. Now we still need our device hash same as before because it's a batch, batch command Now we also need a name hash which is the second hash value um, but this one is actually referring to the actual name that we give it here on the light uh, so if I take that one and name it as um, uh, oh, I'll go with the first one there what the hell I'll call that one LED1 Right, so in that one, they're all called LED. That one's called LED1. Uh, so that one is set apart by that name. So we want to switch on that one because that's what its name is. Now we need to have a name hash, which is a hash, a hash value for LED1. Uh, what is the hash value for that? Well, I don't know. 
uh, we can just figure that one out by using the preprocessor command, which is hash um, and whatever we want, LED1. Right, so that, before that actually runs the code, it'll run that, run that little command there, which is a preprocessor, and it'll change that into a number before trying to run the code. I don't know what that number is, don't really care what that number is, uh, but I can put that in there to make it readable so I know, know what I'm talking about. Uh, of course, our logic type is uh, on, and we're going to switch it on. Once again, if we copy you down to there, we can do the same to switch it off. Right, confirm. Now, there's still a batch command. Uh, if I do that, it is now just referring to the one that is named LED1. Uh, so there you go. Of course, uh, it is working with ones called LED1. If I change you also to be LED1, it is now talking to both of you. Uh, same with you. Uh, you can be LED1. There we go. So this allows us to individually pick one or a subset of all these devices here and make them work. Uh, so let's go a little bit further, just switch you up. Now we can do that again. Uh, so switch you. Oh, let's do something a little bit fancy here. Well, I guess fancy is a relative thing, isn't it? Um, so I shall say you there, to there, to there, to there, and yeah, that'll probably do us. Now, um, if you want to switch you on, you on, you can switch on LED1, LED2, LED3. Uh, we shall switch off one, we shall switch off two, and switch off three. Um, export you. There we go. So, now we can just create, I've got it in my hand. My name are there. I can call you LED2. And call you LED3. Yeah. I named that wrong. Oh, I right, switch it on, you idiot. There we go. Uh, so then we can, of course, uh, uh, repeat that again. One. Two and three. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Uh, right. So all it's doing is just switching one off, one off. And uh, just depending on how you name these, you can get it to do different things there. So if I uh well, you one, you two. You uh, three. I now start at the end and go to the middle. Wow, isn't that useless? Um, but there you go. So it just allows you to call things by name. Multiple things by the same name will behave in the same way. Um, so you can identify individual things, but um, you may not. If you want to be calling things like this, I mean, we're just calling these ones here, and um, it's going to use up lines of code very quickly. Now, there, if you want to do sort of different things with each one, yeah, you're going to be limited by lines of code. We can hook up as many items as we like and reference as many items as we like, but we start, still are limited by the number of lines of code we can have. Um, so this is not super... Well, I mean, it's... Give you more than six pins, of course. It'll 
But um, it, the real power of this thing is if you want to do uh, similar things to a lot of devices. Uh, so we can sort of be, get a bit of code that can do something and then just redefine which light it's actually put, which, which device it's actually um, referring to. And that allows us to do, instead of having to write a separate code for each light and reference it, we can just write code for one light and then just switch between the lights. Sort of, we can use a dial uh, to pick a light and then just an on off switch to actually operate that one. So oh, let's have a go at that one. Um, shush, go away. You, you. Right. Right. So what we've got here is I've only used the dial and the switch into the pins of our chip because we're going to use them to select which light we're, do we're using and the switch just to switch it on and off. Uh, we still need our hash value for our LED because we're still using the, the batch command. I've just moved into the registers R0 to R5. Just the uh, hash values for LED 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, that is just for storing the hash values in our uh, registers. Now to pick which one of them I'm using, uh, I'll get it from the dial. So I'm going to load, load whatever values in the dial into R10. I'm going to use indirect referencing on this one there. I have done a tutorial on indirect referencing on, uh, on our, um, I think it was arrays. I think it was, that was done a while ago. Um, but I'm going to go to a register, whatever is set in R10. So our R10 value, so we're going to go to register whatever is stored in that value. Um, so it'll be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2, 5. That'll tell us what register we're using, which LED we're using, and then we're just going to switch it on according to whatever the, the setting is in that one in the uh, switch. Right, so if I export you, switch you on, I should now be able to switch off. Oh, which where? Are we? There we go. Light three. Uh, right, so if I switch that now to two, um, controlling that one, switch it now down further, controlling the next one, and switch it down further, I'm controlling the first one. Uh, so I can do that, and so because it's only control, can, just doing something very simple, doing the same thing for each code, uh, it's really only one line. So two lines are to read in which which one we want to use and what the value we're going to set to it, and the whole code is essentially one line there, which is our save batch name, and um, that's doing all the work there. So we're only using, well, Less, we're controlling six devices with basically three lines of code there. Uh, so, and that's the thing that you can use as many as you like. Of course, here if we stick them in registers, uh, that is going to be limited by the number of registers. But the real power of this command here is that our hash value converts a string, our user-friendly string, into a number. Uh, now. MIPS can't work with uh, strings. It's pretty useless with them. Uh, it doesn't work at all. Uh, but you can store numbers very easily. And you can store a lot of them. Uh, because this is just a number, uh, we have a place for numbers. So you can take all your numbers and stick them bare in your stack. Um, so we can just push, instead of pushing them into registers, we can just push them all into a stack. So we should just change them to a simple uh, push. Now I can just do that, uh, copy them. Instead of doing that, we're pushing them into the stack. Whoop, and now they're in the stack. Very simple. Now from that one there for our dial, we just need to load that into our stack pointer. Now our dial starts at zero, our stack pointer doesn't, so I'm actually just going to have to add one to that. Our uh, stack pointer, stack pointer is one. Right, and we shall just uh, keep our switch the same. Now, uh, what we need to do is uh, get rid of our indirect referencing. 
Now we shall um, we set our stack pointer and we shall now peak and then stick that into R10. So whatever value is at the stack pointer, uh, stick that in number 10. Right, and then we can just uh, save, save to, once again, our hash value, our name value that we've just pulled from the stack as to whatever, and write to whatever the switch says. So that one there, we should now be writing to the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, it is still working there. And the beauty of this one is now, uh, we've pushed them to into the stack. I can store, I like guess, 512 items into the stack. So I can store a crap load of lights in there and um, just use them all with a very short amount of code. Now, these ones, of course, you can't write 100 of these, uh, 500 of these items in if you've only got 127 lines of code. But you can write up one script, which just has all the pushes in it. And you can write up another script that has a heap more pushes in it. You can use them to program the stack and then run your code. Because uh, they will, once in the stack, they will stay there until you overwrite them. Uh, so you can then overwrite the code, and the stack remains, and put your bit of code in there to... Uh, to work with that. So, um, as I say, a very small amount of code can retrieve items. I say, if, if they're like items and you want to do a similar thing to all of them, you can have a massive number of these and control them all with a very short piece of code and you're not really restricted by the number of lines of code, well, unless you want to do something really complicated with them, I guess. Um, but I mean, that'll come in very handy if you then want to hook up a heap of items, like a heap of harveys, you want to do all the same thing there, a heap of sorters. Uh, we've got the new shoots, which have, have the um, uh, the sorting thing on it, what do they call them? Flip-flop splitters. If you want to control a heap of them to actually check what's in there and sort the, sort things out, you can do a heap of them. Well, you can't because that's the slots. When we've got the slot command, you'll be able to do that with them. Uh, once we get the slot command, we'll be able to give up a whole heap of Harveys and have like a 200 Harveys roughing off the same one. If you really want to put up a massive farm, you can do it all off one chip now. So this is a very, very powerful command that can allow you to run a lot of devices. Uh, well, as long as you want to do similar things. Hydration critical. I'll say, as long as you want to do simple, similar things to all of them there, it's, it's, it, it'll be possible to do it all. Um, but uh, so, I mean, you can... Let you do some things there which are going to be very handy um like um making a really big etch a sketch that'd be handy that's just what every base needs there we go how's that for completely useless a giant etch a sketch and before you ask no it's a rocket stop messing with my art uh but all i have is an up and down Vertical to read the rows, uh, up and down on the horizontal to read the rows, uh, the uh, columns I should say, that one reads the rows, and it uses a two-dimensional matrix to pull all of the lights out, so I have them all named in this one here, from 00 up to 99. They're all pushed straight into the stack, and the code to actually run it here, all it has to do is uh, load the horizontal setting, uh, I've got to reverse it because it's um, the dial's upside down. Load the vertical setting, load the color, and you just multiply the row by 10 to make it a two-dimensional row. Uh, multiply the vertical by 10. Uh, add the column number. Add one because zero, you can't have a zero stack pointer. Peak whatever device is referred to at that point in the stack. Then just a simple, single line, that one there. Save batch name to the LED prefab of the name, whatever name we've pulled out of the matrix, set it to the color, whatever color we've got set on the dial here. If we change our color, uh, which one are we changing? That one there. Uh, so we've got the yellow one there. We just uh, move up, move to the left, and move down, 
and move back to the right. Yay, I've got an etch -a sketch uh, the, uh, the premium entertainment gaming console of, um, of uh, Stationeer's MIPS. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, uh, it's probably not a good demonstration of useful, but um, it's a demonstration of what can be. This is the only using 100 lights. Now, I could put 500 lights in there and make this huge, but um, I can't be bothered, so uh, I'm not going to. Uh, that's a good reason why. Uh, there we go. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's our new commands for say for well, that one's just load batch name. You can do the same. Works the same with the the uh, load. Uh, that's one to save. So it's just setting a value by name. You can load a value by name as well. And uh, that's about all there is to it. So it's a very simple uh, yet extremely powerful little tool to use. So um, have fun with that one. See what you can build. Anyway, till next time, happy building. See ya.